Welcome to Say What, the Energy Ogre podcast where our specialty is lowering your light bill. But we also offer bite-sized education and financial tips for busy people who want to find overall better solutions to living a brighter life. Welcome back everyone to Say What. I'm your host, Laura Thornquist, and with me here is our CEO, Jessen Bradshaw. We always love having you here. Is that right? Yeah, really. Honestly, you keep it's it first, fun and keep it real. It's the first time I think anyone's <laughs> ever said that, especially you. Well, so. uh, that, that, that's a good point. Well, happy new year, Justin. Seriously, it's Likewise. it's great to have uh, to be here in 2020. Uh, we're in a brand new office. It's, yeah, it's exciting. Energy is really exciting. With I'm not the, sure what's showing up behind us, but... We will find out. Right. It's, it's, it's going to be a surprise. Be yeah, yeah, it is. So, you know... <laughs> dinosaur. Di- I like the whatever. dinosaur. Yeah. 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 Is that, are you saying I'm a dinosaur? Okay, good answer. <laughs> All right. Not With really. that being said, let's talk about Energy Ogre. We've got a lot of great things happening in 2020. Let's give people a little uh, sneak peek. Sure. I mean, we, you know, it's always amazing how hard everybody works. And, yeah. you know, I think it's interesting from a customer's perspective. You know, you might sign up with us. Um these guys do a fantastic job of getting, you know, emails out, some of our mm-hmm. quarterly, some of our newsletter stuff, Great communication. things like this. Yep. But I think for a lot of people, you know, what ends up happening is you sign up and and it's sort of like fire and forget. So I mean, that's mm-hmm. perfect probably for a lot of people. They're like, just leave me alone. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me <laughs> but, live you know, my for life. for some folks, like, is everything going okay? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how am I doing? Um, so... One of the things that we've been really working on pretty hard over the course of the last couple of years is we really wanted to make sure that we uh, had more information that was available to our customers about how everything is going, what we're doing for them. You know, to a certain extent, it's sort of like that whole duck on a pond, right? That's right. So we're doing a lot of things behind the scenes. um, And I think a lot of folks may not really realize that we're doing as much as we are trying to, you know, help minimize their costs. So a number of really uh, exciting things I've been pushing for for quite a while. We just want to make sure they're they're done correctly. So uh, I think probably the biggest thing that will be coming out that I'm really excited about is uh, we need to put information in people's hands the way they typically get that. So we'll have our mobile app running out in the first part of this year. So very excited about that where you can get into your account, see a lot of information allows us to push some notifications to our customers. Hey, is this going on or is this sort of happening? Because you know, emails get lost or, you know, folks are busy. So I'm right. uh, super excited about that, that it just allows us to stay more in touch uh, with our customers, which is a big one. Um, a lot of the folks, you know, when they come in, they'll say, hey, I think these guys are doing a good job or I saw, you know, what my savings were on the first run. But uh, we really want to put more information in folks' hands. So they, they have an accounting, a, a tallying of how well do we think they're doing relative to what they would otherwise be doing. So we have some life-to-date savings reports that will go out there for folks who have been with us long enough for us to have, have enough history uh, with them as well. Um, so there's the, the big key this year, and what a big part of our push is, is to not get in everybody's face and not overwhelm them with stuff. This whole point of Energy Ogre is to make it simple. You know, we're trying to make life easy for our members, but we want, we really want to make sure that we're, you know, providing more information or we're or giving people information that's available to them when they're interested in, in consuming that data. So um, I'm excited about all that. We are too. Uh, you know, and with that being said, this is, you know, th- these are members that we're speaking to currently. We have right. a lot of people that we're trying to reach out that aren't members. Sure. And a lot of that is because they don't understand the reason for deregulation and the advantages of deregulation. So that's what this show is focused on today is is deregulation. And, um, you know, it, we thought it was really important to review the basics in the electricity industry, kind of review deregulation in the state of Texas, because in 2002, believe it or not, I can't believe it's been that long, 2002, deregulation gave millions the option to choose their electricity provider and it's something unheard of in texas since the late 1880s when the first power plant was built in galveston so a little history there for you but we still find a large majority of texans still don't take advantage so let's discuss why why do people not take advantage of deregulation my first instinct is they just don't understand they don't get it well i i think that's maybe part of it Mm -hmm. for sure i i think the biggest issue that, that sort of prevents people from getting into really better overall economic situations in this competitive market, which is, you know, it's a competitive market, is every one of us, we have all kinds of demands for our time and all kinds of things no question. just compete for our time, whether it's work 
work until, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock. We might work, you know, odd schedules. We might be working weekends. We might be working nights. Mm -hmm. We have some time off. We might be taking care of our parents, taking care of our children, um, might have extra jobs or just might want to just sit there and have a cup of coffee and Mm -hmm. watch Netflix or, you know, uh, uh, read a book or something like that. So I think that what happens is, is that electricity is one of these weird things. If it's your car, you know, you get in your car, most people get in their cars every day if you're here in Texas and it's present. You see it all the time. For most people, I think they just don't really think a lot about electricity. It just sort of happens. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, people pay attention to what's going on with their electricity when, one, it stops working. (laughs) Right. Or two, they get some bill that is out of the norm for what their expectations really are. Right. And so I think that what happens is, is that people get sort of shocked into uh, thinking about this stuff as opposed to it's, it's being part of our, hey, you know, if I'm going to go buy groceries, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go buy groceries at, you know, at this particular place where I want to buy online because I know it's, you know, I've done the research, it's cheaper or whatever have you. I know I can buy these things better or this quality is better. Mm -hmm. Uh, But buying electricity is just different from buying anything else. And, you know, the biggest reason for that that I think is confusing to a lot of people is electricity is the only thing that I can think of that we buy that cannot be stored. And so everything else that we buy, you know, you know, dealers can have in inventory of cars, you know, um, supermarkets have inventory of stuff that they're selling. Mm-hmm. Everything that we buy, the way we sort of look for pricing and all that stuff is, is, is because of that whole model. When people put stuff in inventory and, hey, there's a scarcity, there's none more available. But power is just different. It's just fundamentally different. Yeah. And I think that it's – it. People's intuition tells them it's one way, but when they get into it, it's like, this doesn't work exactly like I thought it was going to. So, Good points. Very good points. You, of course, Texas is one of the country's largest consumers of electricity, which is pretty interesting in and, in and of itself. But on average, we consume a whopping $24 billion per year. And that's according to some research done by Electricity Local. That's a lot. Well, I think it's because of our climate. Yes. And so... You know, if you looked at, one, it's how large the population is here. And, and right. you know, our demographics continue to change. We have people moving here from all over the country. Daily, huge amounts. Yep. Right. So I was reading something, uh, you know, we're, we're picking up on average, you know, uh, our net migration mm-hmm. is over 200 people a day. That's a lot. It's a huge amount. Mm-hmm. So and it just adds up. And that's every day, you know, day in, day out. So lot, lots of extra people that are coming here. And, you know, for us, our climate is when we're, we're built for the heat. So... Right. Uh, that's why our summertime demands are so high. And that's why summertime pricing is high. And that's why a lot of the generation fleet that we built here is really structured around making sure we can meet peak demand in the summertime. No one really worries about that quite as much in the wintertime. It's all set around, can we, can we manage 100 degree heat and keeping everybody nice and cool? That's well, this competition has been good for us, of course, because it gives us thousands of options. But that's a blessing and a curse sometimes because, you know, you get all these options out there and, and you've got these, you know, free nights and solar days, uh, you know, this, this free thermostat, all these freebies out there. It's just really confusing. So, for example, if I were raised and I could only wear one pair of black shoes and then all of a sudden I'm an adult and I can buy any shoe I want, could you imagine how overwhelmed that would be? Right? Sure. And we, we looked at that originally when yeah. we were looking at this business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, originally what we thought of was, hey, let's 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 build a business that that will consolidate, you know, thousands of different plans into like seven and have editor's choice or those types of things. And there's a couple of problems with that. Right. Uh, one that, you know, everyone uses electricity uniquely. Mm-hmm. And so that means that you really can't. It's not like a book club where you can say these are great books and most people are going to have a great reading experience. It really depends on how much you use of which of these plans is most appropriate for you. So, one, that was a big reason why that didn't work. But the thought process behind that was, and it's overwhelming, you know, you can, there's a reason that there is that term analysis paralysis, right? Right. You can get too many options where it becomes overwhelming. And especially if you have the flexibility to say, I'm just not going to mess with this now. I'm going to get to it later. And then later never comes. Mm -hmm. Then that's, I think, where a lot of people find themselves. So what's the best advice for those folks that know they have an option beyond, of course, coming to Energy Ogre, right? Sure. If, if, and, of 
course we would say that you come to us and, and we'll we'll fix it and forget it but if they they know they're in a competitive market they know that okay um i know i could get on average a pretty good price how would they go about shopping for that so you know there's a couple of things you you might be you might be ready to shop if you look like this right, right and right. so you know one of the first signs of that is generally speaking if you've been with a provider for a very long time mm-hmm. or you don't recall the last time you actually signed up for a contract with that provider you're most likely on a variable rate which tend to be in the higher cost category right. and uh, so almost any other decision that you make is going to reduce your costs mm-hmm. as a general rule right there's always going to be some differences here and there do something in other words take an um, action. almost any action you take yes. is going to be better than what you're doing that's right. That's right. um so that that's one um you know, so y- you know that's not optimal but you're going to do better than what you're mm-hmm. otherwise doing separately you know aside from that um you know if if you've been with that provider for you know relatively long period of time it's just like if you were with um you know your cable television provider or your um you know uh, mobile phone carrier yep. but uh, you know cable television and mobile phones there's equipment that's unique to those particular people so it's a sort of a pain if i want to change providers i got to come in take my set top box and someone else has to come in right. well power is awesome because it's not that way uses all the same infrastructure but you know i can remember years ago and i was you know cable customer mm-hmm. and you know, you'd get in and then I'd get this bill later and it's like, man, why am I paying $300 or $250 for cable television? This is insane. Price they, creep. Well, I hadn't realized <laughs> that, you know, either, you know, my initial contract or, mm-hmm. you know, the, the teaser rate was gone. And, and we see this all the time with, with cell phones as well, mobile tel- mobile carriers is, yeah. uh, I think that's changing a little bit. It's um, starting to, yes. But it, it used to be really bad that, you know, you're in this contract, you had to sign up for a contract and you can't go anywhere and, yeah. you know, termination fees are exorbitant. So, um, you know, I think some people like the flexibility of not being in a contract. They like the idea of being able to go elsewhere at a moment's notice, mm-hmm. which is totally fine, but you actually have to take advantage of it. Right. So just having the flexibility that you're not making use of probably costing you in the long run. So in had, the short run. And in the short run, you're right. Had we not deregulated, Energy Ogre really wouldn't be in existence at all. No, I mean, I think I think the merit of, of the competitive marketplace um, – you know, I was around before this all happened yep. um, for a long time before this all happened. And, you know, I'm a believer in better choices and having competition can bring, and, and in, in this case actually has brought much more innovation into the marketplace and has brought um, all kinds of different options. And I'd rather, I would rather not go to the same restaurant every single day, getting the exact same meal every single day. I'd like to have some flexibility in, in being able to choose, even if I don't go to this restaurant or that restaurant, knowing that I can. Having the option. Right. And that's I think right. that's, you know, that's for better or for worse. I mean, maybe I was indoctrinated as a child, but that's the American way. That's, it is. That's the Texan way. Yes. So, so I think that it's always better for us to have choices. Uh, I think having choices keeps everybody else honest, right? Or has the has a much higher likelihood of keeping people honest the regulated structure um it it wasn't really terrible its primary purpose was in my opinion not focused on reducing costs to the greatest extent possible Mm -hmm. it was about making sure the lights are always on at all costs and i think that that's not really the right way to do this and Mm. so i think that's why you know what, what we've come to today we don't, people are not able to make decisions on investing in a nuclear power plant that goes $3 billion over budget and have the ratepayers be on the hook for that for the next 30 or 40 years. Right. That's the kind of stuff that happened in the regulated environment. And that does, that just does not happen now. Speaking of the regulated environment, we've got San Antonio and Austin still regulated. Talk about the differences on, on, how what their experiences are as opposed to those that live outside uh, or li- live in a deregulated area. Well, I mean, I think it's probably going to be closer to what we dealt with here, yep. you know, back in the old HLMP days where if you're up in the Metroplex uh, in the old TU electric days. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a tariff and you get electric service and it is what it is. And 
And the way it used to work here is there's a cost recovery. So, um, you know, Austin and San Antonio, they're not deregulated, but they're, the, the reality is that, that market is not competitive because the municipality is the monopoly, yeah. right? And, and the, the dereg law, Senate Bill 7, did not force municipal utilities to open. It didn't force certain certain public power, like some of the co-ops and some of those other entities were not forced to open. Mm-hmm. One or two of them have actually done so since that happened. But, you know, if you're one of those providers, uh, you're a customer of one of those providers, you're going you're gonna to pay them their cost plus their return. Yeah. And, you know, you're, what you pay is going to be a function of how good of a job that they do buying fuel. You know, here we used to have... Here's your base charges, and they're this this horrible thing we'd look at, and it'd be like five times the cost of everything else is a fuel cost yeah. adjustment. And so, you know, if they're if it costs them more to cover it, or there's no accountability for the decision making on on behalf of the person that's just making sure the electricity shows up. I mean, in my view, it's not like it is in the competitive market. And so that's one of the huge benefits of the competitive market is that, mm-hmm. you know, these guys are trying to keep each other competitive. If you're paying attention to what's happening in the competitive market, you're going to get a competitive rate. Do you ever anticipate that changing for the, uh, for let's yeah. say the Austins and the San Antonios? I, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, for municipal utilities, mm-hmm. uh, the, the utilities themselves can be a profit center. So that's part of the city budget can come from those types of things. And so to me, it's largely a function of finances. Um, and there's also some other issues like, you know, in the U.S., some of these uh, public power entities, they're able to, to um, put bonds into the marketplace, mm-hmm. municipal bonds, and some of those municipal bonds have certain tax breaks associated with them. So there's a tax advantage. And so uh, there, there's a bunch of rules around, you know, how those can be used and funds associated with those things. So there's a lot in, in the financing of the way these things are set up and how everything has been put in place so far that I think makes it difficult to unwind. It's much more likely that we would see some of the co-ops decide to open um, just the because a lot of the cooperatives that are out there, well, they, they're nonprofits, mm-hmm. right? And so yeah. they maintain wires, they maintain the distribution systems, and some of them maintain transmission and distribution systems. But usually they buy from another larger group, mm-hmm. you know, maybe a generation and transmission co-op or somebody larger. So it's easy for them to say, hey, when I'm at the end of that contract, you know, it's easier to say, I'm just going to become a wires company. Let's let all of our members go ahead and shop you know, for their, for their power. And there'd be plenty of suppliers to be willing to supply yes. in, in that case. So I think it's much more likely that we will see cooperatives open as time goes on than maybe some of the municipal utilities. It all depends on how their financing is set up. Well, it, so looking at the big picture with the increase in, of, of demand in the state of Texas, I mean, it, it's going to be extremely costly for the municipalities, is it not? Well, I mean, it's, it's more of the same, you know, okay. right? So for them... The you know, customer like, keeps on paying. More. Yeah, and you know, it's they're making investment decisions <clears throat> with the next twenty years in mind. True, right? So, yep. true. So it's you know that's the problem with the investor-owned utility regulated structure that exists in most of the rest of the country, mm-hmm. is that a decision's made. Oh, but it's just going to be a it's going to be a a, a two dollar increase per customer per year. Well, you end up getting killed by the death of a thousand cuts you know you do two dollar increase a thousand times or whatever you know maybe not quite to that magnitude but it just it starts to add up all these small decision points so um you know i think this is you know there's there's definitely the flip side is that nobody here in texas is the market is supposed to figure out are we going to have enough power plants online next year and the year after so that's that's the structure so the marketplace will figure it out if the demand is there then prices will move to a, a, a place that allows and incents people to come in and put, you know, generation or incents them to come and figure out energy efficiency technologies or a way to solve the problem. And I think that's that's one of the, the, the missing pieces is that it really spurs innovation. And we will be, right. so Texas, since we are so, uh, you know, in the competitive areas, 
we're, we're so far out in front of most other parts of the country. I think a lot of innovation that we're going to see in terms of, you know, in-home renewable technologies or in, in any kind of an in-home energy efficiency, optimization, management, those things will all get deployed here first because it's, it's that dynamic where if, there is, if there's an opportunity for someone to fix a problem, mm-hmm. it's not papered over because it's in some regulated structure. There's a, way, there's a way to actually add value to end consumers here, and there's enough opportunity cost that's avoided or there's right. enough cost that's avoided uh, to make those things a reality. So it, it pushes us to the forefront within the United States of being really innovative on the emergent technologies and deploying those technologies. And it brings it back to why Energy Ogre is here, because this entire discussion, unless you are all about electricity and love it, there, it, it goes over most people's heads, right? And we talk about where we're going in the future. The fact is, is, is that's why Energy Ogre is here in the first place, is we take, it, we take care of it, all of it for you, so that you don't have to think about it, and you can just rest assured that you're getting the lowest price possible. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the that's matter is, is that, that the people are not dummies, that's right. right? So it... None of this stuff at the end of the day is rocket science. It's not. Mm-mm. So it just requires a lot of, of perpetual diligence in terms of what's happening. It's, it's just like being a subject matter. I mean, I'm sure we've got plenty of people that watch this or our customers that are, you know, lots of college graduates. I mean, of some of those, those degrees yeah. are difficult to get. A lot of folks are, you know, have a high degree of technical skill and all kinds of other things. So it has nothing to do with it being not learnable. It's, it's a question of how do you choose to, to spend your time? What's a good use of your time? Yeah. Is it letting us or somebody like us take care of it for you? Or is it spending the time to become a subject matter expert? Some people love knowledge and they want to learn this stuff. Um, but it's not just about learning it. You got to, it's like everything else. If you know, you're an attorney, you got, you know, continuing education and you're a physician, you got continuing education. You've got all these things, if you're an engineer, you have all those types of things. So there's, there's the industry and the state of the arts constantly changing. And that's absolutely true in our business as well. In fact, the, the stuff is changing at such a rapid pace with, yeah. you know, renewable technologies. Uh, we're building a lot of grid scale, <laughs> grid scale solar. You know, we, we continue to do things, a lot of in-home battery types of, of applications. So that's changing so fast that you almost have to be on top of it constantly to know right. where this is going. And who can do that? Again, as you mentioned, time is a, is a value. And, and there, are, there are those folks that really want to do that. For sure. But for, for a large majority that have families or taking care of parents, as you stated, they're just too busy and it's out of sight. Yeah, out I mean, of for some people, it's, um, they, they, you can learn it on your own. Of course. But it's just as easy. There's no consequence to you learning it and not doing something. Let mm-hmm. us take care of it. We'll just handle it. You can still learn it all you want and be educated about what we are doing for you. I could learn to change my oil, but would I really do it? You should. Learn to change my oil. Right. Yeah. That's like, (laughs) I should learn to change my tire. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Anything else about deregulation that we should share with folks as we were talking about it? Anything that, that we've missed that people would find interest in? Well, you know, the, the problem with an open-ended question like that, as you know, is I sort of live, eat, and breathe this stuff. So, it's true. Um, you know, that's, it I, is interesting. I could spend, <laughs> you know, hours and hours and, and bore every single one of the people that's watching, um, <laughs> which I do here to Well, they're listening the for a reason because they are interested. So. Yeah, but they probably, like, dropped off three or four minutes that's ago. That's probably like, true as well. We probably yeah, lost this them. This could be, like, someone sleep, getting ready for bed. <laughs> We're putting them like, to sleep. Yeah. No, not you, me. So <laughs> that's what my staff always tells me. But, you know, it's w- the, the biggest takeaway here, I think, is that um, I, I think that the, the, the competitive market has been a huge windfall for end consumers. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the problem is it's hard for a lot of people to quantify that because they're not taking advantage of it. Yeah. But it's just like it's just like saying, hey, there's there's vouchers for you to go get a, a you know an education for free. Or there's, you know, discounts that are available for you to get. If you didn't take advantage of it, it's not that it, the system's broken. Right. So you're not taking advantage of, of the way it is all set up. So I think I hate that a lot of people have had a negative experience in the competitive market. And, and the it, fact is most, uh, somebody I has. I think almost, almost everyone everyone's has. had at least That's one right. negative experience. And some of it's, to be honest with you, a lot of it is, uh, you know, someone that's signing you up 
yeah. might embellish the truth. Best case scenario, they might just flat out tell you something that's not true. And we still see that with, with some of our customers, uh, of stuff that they're told from their previous providers when we, when we place them, when they first come to that's us. Right. Yeah, a lot, which is really disheartening. But, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that, that almost everyone can, can, can really materially lower their costs. And to me, it's just, you know, it's, we all have better things to spend our money on. Yep. Than, than, you know, giving it away to, you know, another organization. I'd love for, you know, everyone to be able to say if I had an extra, you know, $50 a month or $25 a month or $100 a month, whatever that is, there's, there's a lot of good that, that we can all That do. you could do with that. For sure. There's and no so um, anyway, I, I get excited about it. I Part of this is because, um, you know, I end up, we have a lot of our customers that it's not life and death. It's not the end of the world if it their costs go up, you know, they pay a thousand dollars a year more than they otherwise would. Yeah. But there are a lot of people, that's a huge difference. And so, I mean, there are a lot of people that affects their quality of life and their lifestyle, um, or just the amount of breathing room that they have to, to deal with something that's unexpected. And, and, you know, the ones that really always get me are, you know, folks that we have that I've, I've talked to many times that are, you know, elderly folks maybe, or someone yeah. on fixed income where that makes a big difference. And, and I love that. That, that keeps me motivated. It's a big part of what, what I love coming in here and, and doing that for people. We so. still get that people saying, Hey, I, I was able to buy shoes this month, you know, I, and it, it's just, it's it just amazing. makes me feel bad that, that, you know, we were not able to help some of these folks sooner. I mean, the fact is, is we want people to, they need to pay a fair price. Right. That's it. I right. mean, I mean it, it, they're, the retailers and the generators have to make a margin. In of course. Stuff. Otherwise, it's not um, it's Lucrative not free. business. That's right. right. So they have to make a reasonable margin. Mm-hmm. We just want to make sure that, that there's a huge difference between what a lot of people are paying and what a reasonable amount they should be paying is. And, right. and we want to keep them in that, in that right sweet spot. And if people are still with us and not sleeping, yeah. um, I do have one, one other question for sure. you because it's been brought up several times. You know, you see it on social media all the time. They say, hey, I, I need a new electricity provider. I'm paying right. too much. And they're, they're soliciting comments from, from neighbors. Sure. And, and they trust it because, it, you know, it's a, trusted, it's a trusted friend, trusted neighbor. Hey, I use this company or, hey, I use, use that company. Sure. The fact is it's not the company that they should be looking at, right? Well, it well, can be the company, but. So the, it's one of the other things, you know, if you were, <coughs> I hate to keep coming back to like car stuff, maybe I just have cars in the mind. Um, but yeah. it's sort of like saying, what's a good car brand? I like Fords. I like Mazdas. I like Hyundais. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, Toyotas, whatever that is, Honda. Where it's, if you look at that, those vehicles are manufactured with a certain philosophy, with a design philosophy, with a, a life, an economic useful life philosophy, mm-hmm. right? Some of them are just junk and some of them are actually engineered well and they're engineered to last longer. And people know when they buy quality, right? Right. That's what they're, that's what they're trying to do that, that, that mental math around. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that I was talking about before. A lot of our experience, our buying experience that that's, that we're used to, hey, if I buy this brand of cheese or I buy this brand, whatever it is, yeah, these are high quality products. Mm-hmm. In power and electricity, there's no quality differential at all. Correct. It's the exact same thing. And so people's experience is, is that, that they can apply their buying experience and everything else that they do to electricity, and they can't. It doesn't apply. Because it's not storable. Right. And these providers are pr- all providing exactly, I mean, it's not almost exactly, it is literally exactly the same product. They're, it's exactly the same. So there is no one provider that's, that you can say that's is a good provider. Almost all of these providers, some do and some don't, um, have really good price plans, and some of them have horrendous price plans. You know, the economic model is, I want to get someone to pay. This is what the retailer might be thinking is I want to get a customer to pay me the absolute most that they're going to pay me for this service. Right. It's the same thing as when you go to the movies, right? That's right. That's why there's matinee pricing that, okay, so I can't get this guy to come or this lady to come in the evenings. If I lower the price during some of these other periods, I can get as many people watching this movie as possible by charging each one of them the maximum amount that they're willing to pay. And so that's that's microeconomics one on one, and that's exactly what ends up happening here. And 
And so, you know, when someone solicited those kinds of comments, you might have had a great experience with a provider and you might want to tell your neighbors about that. But if they fall into a horrific rape program, or they sign up for a five-year way over market type plan, then that's not really good for them. That's right. The other problem that we see sometimes too, and, and there's some legislation out there, and we'll see how this applies to that, is when someone says, hey, who's a good provider? Sometimes you're going to end up getting people that show up on those things, you know, choose these guys or choose these guys, and they're not telling you or use this promo code, and they're not telling you that they're <laughs> actually an authorized representative or that, they're, that there's some margin that they're getting out of that. So, so just, you know, just be careful. I, I think that, you know, a lot of people complain about it, but the state's website, powertochoose.org, um, it, all those plans are sort of out there. And, and you, you asked me originally, if you're not going to have us do, do this for you, what would, what would you do? And pay attention. If you haven't changed providers in a while and you haven't entered into a contract in a while, go over to power to choose, uh, look through those contracts in your zip code, you know, look at something that, um, is simple. The simpler the plan is, the more line items, pull up the electricity fax label mm -hmm. and find ones that just tend to be simpler. If you don't know exactly when you use electricity or how you use electricity, be very careful of time of use plans or free nights and weekends or solar day, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, seven free day. What it just, that is, um, those, those plans are almost always more expensive. The There's, gotcha plans. Right. So <laughs> just be super careful. The simpler, the better. Look for fixed energy pricing that's not going to change over the term of the contract and, and find something that you're comfortable with and move on down the road. And don't forget always to use our savings calculator or our power check. It right. You can figure out if it's reasonable where you are right. or where you're not as reasonable. And it's a free resource we want to make available to folks whether you use us or not. Yep. We're here to help you. For sure. In several ways. All right, Justin, we always enjoy speaking with you. We'll be doing more of this uh, That's funny because that's not like what you said earlier <laughs> in our meetings, but... <laughs> To twist my arm now. Yeah, honestly, it was good. And um, I would love for the listeners here to please leave a comment below on questions that you would like to have answered from Justin because he is full of knowledge. He's been around for a very long full time. Full of knowledge. Full of knowledge. Okay. I didn't call you a dinosaur. Right, but it's, I'm, I'm glad you said full of knowledge as opposed to full of something. <laughs> oh. I didn't say that. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess that until next time, thanks again for your time. And uh, as the saying goes, be cool, stay, stay kind. And uh -oh. How does that saying go? Be cool. Uh -huh. Stay kind. Okay. Do great things. Okay. Because that's the yoga way. See you next time.